In the first part of this tutorial, we have designed a low poly house like this, in very simple steps, starting from the default cube, and then we also added few materials for some of its parts. Now in this part, we will proceed with the next steps, and complete the modeling. Let us get started. We'll change these windows and the door to a light color. So we have to select them together, while keeping the shift key pressed on the keyboard. By the way, the link to the first part of this tutorial is given below in the video description. Okay, now we need to create another material for this. So add another entry here, with this plus button, and create a new material. We can change its base color. We'll fine tune this later, for now we just need to attach a distinct material. Then click on assign, so that this new material is applied on the windows and on the door part of our model. Next, we'll add a bevel effect to all different parts, but we have one very important step before we go there. It is possible that you get duplicate vertices created during the design. You need to first remove them, otherwise beveling the edges may get challenging. So turn on the vertex selection mode. Then press A to select all the vertices for our model. Now go to the mesh menu and under merge, you have to select merge by distance. If there are duplicate vertices, it will show in this area how many vertices are removed. We did not have any duplicate vertex in our model, but you may have it in your case, so it is important that you run this step once. We have discussed several such useful tips in a separate tutorial that will help you to avoid errors in beveling any object in Blender. The link is given in the video description. So, to select everything over here and turn on the face selection mode. Now select any one face that has got this red material. Go to the select menu and under select similar, select material. As a result, Blender will automatically select all the faces that have the same red material. Let us now pick up this bevel tool. Move this yellow handle little bit so that a bevel effect is added to all the edges of the selected faces. You can customize this bevel effect from this operator box. We have to be on this tab called edges. In the width type, let us select width so that we get a uniform amount of bevel on all sides of our object. In the width value, let us go with 0.06 and in the segment, we can enter 10. So we got a nice bevel effect added to all these edges of our object. We'll now add a different material for this bevel, maybe one black material. So we have to first add a new entry into this material list, then create a new material. We have to change this base color to complete black. And just like how we did it earlier, you have to now click on this assign button so that this black color material is applied to all the beveled edges that are selected. So we get the edges in the black color and I think it is looking nice. Let us go to the next step. We'll now add a similar bevel effect to all other edges in the lower part of this model house. To make it little easier, let us first turn on the X-ray mode from here. In this mode, you can see through the objects just like X-ray does. And if you make any box selection in this mode, it will automatically include all the vertices or faces within that box, even on the backside of the object which is not visible. So it is very helpful for a quick selection. Let us make a selection with a selection box like this. It will select all the faces on the lower part of our model. We can then turn off this X-ray option. If you now move this yellow handle of the bevel tool slowly, you will see that some bevel is added to the edges that we have selected. But it has also added bevel to this internal edge, which is not really an edge of our object. We do not want to include them in our bevel, because they are only connecting the bigger rectangles with the smaller ones for internal topology. We should remove all these connecting edges from our selection before we add the bevel, so let us undo the bevel that was added. Since we want to remove an edge from our selection, not a face, we need to be in the edge selection mode, and the selection tool should be selected. Now, press the control key and deselect these edges from our active selection. We have to do the same thing for the reverse side as well. Now we are good. So let us again turn on the face selection mode. Then pick up the bevel tool. Let us move this handle to add some amount of bevel to our edges. This time, there is no bevel added to these internal edges. Now open the operator box. Change this width type to width. The bevel amount can be 0.06, and the number of segments can be 10. So the bevel is added nicely for these edges, we'll now apply a different material for this bevel. 
it can be some darker shade of the same color. So let us first add a new entry in this material list. And from this drop down list, we'll select this material, which is on our walls. But we'll create a darker version of this. So we have to first make a copy of this material, otherwise we will end up changing the original material itself. So here, let us change this value field, to create a darker shade of the same material. And then we have to click on this assign button, to apply this new material on these edges. So here is the model, with all the colors added to it. We can change the materials anytime. Let's say, we want to change this wall color. You can also use a textured material, instead of a plain color, anything you can do, as long as you have created the material slots, and assign them to the required parts of the model. Back to the object mode. We'll do few more enhancements for this, so that it looks more realistic, but before that, if we compare this model with our reference project, we can see that there are some color differences. We'll make it exactly like the original. So we have to make suitable changes to these materials for their color values. Let us fast forward this part, because this is not very important for our tutorial, and you understood this already. Finally, we get the model here, same as our reference picture. But if you look closely, the surface of this object looks artificial, like some plastic body, so we'll add some bump noise to this surface. We need to do that in a shader editor. Let us split this screen into half. And we'll open the shader editor on this side. You can close this. We'll first pick up this red material. By default, we have one principle BSDF. We have to add the bump noise to this normal input. So go to the add menu, and from the texture group, add one, noise texture. Then once again in the add menu, from vector, add a bump node, and place it in between these two nodes. Now connect this FAC output to the height input of the bump node, and connect its output to the normal input of the principal BSDF. So you can see that we got some uneven surface like this, but we have to modify its scale to fit it for our purpose. So change this scale factor in the bump node, let's enter 500. And you can immediately see how the texture of our target surface has changed. It now looks quite good, we can apply this same effect for the other parts of our model as well. So select these two nodes together, and press Ctrl C, to copy these nodes. Pick up another material, and use Ctrl V, to paste the two nodes here. Finally, connect normal to normal. We get the bump noise added to this part, but it is too heavy, we need to reduce it little bit. So let us change this strength value, maybe to 0.25. This material now looks just fine. So let us copy these nodes once again, and select another material. Paste the nodes here, and connect it like before. We'll repeat the same thing for the other material as well, so connect these two. Okay, now we are done, let us close this editor. So we reached the final stage of our model, a simple house. You can now add more things, maybe like a tree, or a grassland here, all up to you. You can easily add a tree using the sapling add-on, that comes by default with Blender. We have covered that in a separate tutorial, you can get the link in the video description. I hope this helps the beginners to get started with modeling in Blender. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to subscribe to this channel.